It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, August 16th, your daily dose of Flyers news analysis and high quality content that is talking all things Carolina Hurricanes today. And a little Flyers. Little Flyers too. All right, let's start the show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. That's where you'll keep up to date on all of our episodes and the Flyers news. You can also email the show at LockedOnFlyers at gmail.com. We've got another mailbag coming up this week, so get those questions in on today's show, we do actually have uh, a number of things to talk about in Flyers land that happened over the last couple of days. And then we will get into our crossover with Jared Ellis of Locked on Hurricanes and get to know what the Canes did this offseason to stay atop the Metro division. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you're listening. So subscribe. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Russ, I think we have to pat ourselves on the back a little bit here that we were right about Emil Andre on Team Sweden versus Team USA. Now, USA did win against mm-hmm. Sweden three to two, but it was a close game mm-hmm. as expected. And Emil Andre, I think kind of performed the way we expected him to. He did get those tough matchups that we were talking about. He did. I mean, there was, <laughs> and he was doing his best with pushback. Um, he did hit a post. I mean, that was, you know, a shot that could have gone in any other day, but he was skating well. He was doing really well on the puck retrieval, but the U S was a buzzsaw as far as just, beating down Sweden, like just Sweden. The one thing I was worried about them was they were very good at getting the pucks first, but if they got there first, they didn't come away with it last because the U S just put a hurting on them and they were doing that a lot. So Andre had his, he had his hands full, man. He did. And at five on five, he was covering Logan Cooley, which is yeah. a real tough assignment. I got to say uh, he did get caught a little bit on a uh, five on five goal that Team USA scored. Um, he They just got caught letting Team USA get behind them, like both yes. defensemen who were out there for... Yeah, Sweden. even Edmondson, same thing. I mean, mm-hmm. and he's much yeah, bigger. It, it wasn't entirely Emil Andre's fault. It was like collectively Team Sweden letting USA get around them. Yeah, Andre but, did a good job, though. He um, he knows how to hold guys off with his stick to keep them uh, out of the crease, I saw him do that a couple of times, bigger players. So, you know, that's a move that that can definitely translate when he moves up into the, you know, North American pro level. Yeah. Uh, the other goal uh, that he was out on the ice for was a power play goal. So I'll give him a little break there. Mm-hmm. But he did score a goal and an assist in the game. So he contributed yes. on both of Team Sweden's goals. And I really thought, like, his goal was just a really great shot because it was it powerful was. enough to bounce off the glove of the Team USA goaltender. Into Although the I don't net. think he has a great glove, but that's fair. Listen, I think, you know, it was a, it was a good shot. It was a good shot, though. It was. Yeah, it was. And then the assist he had was on a last ditch effort when Sweden had an empty net at the end of the game. But kudos to them because I really think they moved the puck well. Mm -hmm. on that sequence and Andre's uh, shot that kind of bounced off somebody in front of the net that somebody else cleaned up and and stuffed in the net. It was still a really good shot and created that rebound. But that's the whole thing. That's, you know, half the battle is just getting a shot on net so somebody can do something with it. You hit the net, you get nothing. You get it near the net, to the net, even if it doesn't get to the net, if it gets to someone's stick, it's all that matters. Exactly. So uh, good luck to Sweden. They will be in the quarterfinals uh, despite the loss because uh, they've had a pretty good tournament. They'll just so get a tougher far. opponent. That's all. They will. 
All right, the next bit of Flyers news. They signed RFA forward Jackson Cates to a one-year two-way contract for seven seventy-five. dollars So the Flyers are slowly making their way through these RFAs. Uh, we may still be right in getting uh, Hayden Hodgson being the last man standing, but we'll yeah. see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, look, Cates is going to make 120 this year. He'll be in the AHL most of the he year. Will. So, and that's fine. It's it's a decent salary. He's in the same, you know, organization as his brother. Can't get much better than that for him. And look, if he has a good year, I think there will be opportunities this year during the season for players to get called up. So, you know, that's something he could shoot for. Absolutely. So there was a deadline yesterday that passed for certain college players who were drafted to get signed by their teams who owned their rights. Uh, Otherwise, they were going to expire and they were free to pursue other things. And Flyers prospect Jack St. Ivany, who's a defenseman uh, drafted in 2018 in the fourth round, was on that list. Yeah, I mean, he's a pretty talented defenseman. He has good speed. He's got a little bit of scoring ability. His defense is decent. It's not great, but it's good. Uh, you know, I figured as a depth defenseman, he he would be worth a sign. It does make me wonder whether the Flyers have the actual funds for it after everything that happens with the other threes getting getting signed does make you wonder because, again, if you weren't going to sign St. Ivany because you are a team in need, Tyler Weiss is a, is a good player. Like, you know, I, I get it. If Colorado doesn't, you know, feel like signing him, that's fine. But he's only 22. I've watched him when he was with the NTDP and then after that. And he's fast and he's a pretty good goal scorer. Decent player here. I mean, he's 5'10". But again, they may not have the money to sign him either. So, you know, that's where not being a great team but having cap issues can hurt you. Yeah, because there's no way to take a chance on some of these guys that you right. think could take a, another step forward, but you just don't know. Right. And uh, Jack St. Ivany is on this list, one of several that do technically have another eligibility year because of COVID. They gave some players an additional year, mm-hmm. in which case the Flyers would retain his rights through that year. But I don't know if he's going to go back to VC for, for a fifth year in college. I'd be surprised. I don't think he's going to, because I think even in a worst case scenario, he turns pro, he goes into the ECHL for a year. You know, you do get paid, you get in pro experience. You hope a team calls you up. Maybe an AHL team signs you sometime during the season because they see you're doing really well. Or, they, you know, you play a full season like Mason Millman, and then next year somebody's interested in you. I think that's probably the better route for him to go now. And that's well, and also he probably doesn't want the Flyers to hold his rights anymore either, to be honest. Yeah, I wouldn't blame him, honestly, uh, with uh, all the cap situations that we have been right. talking about. They'd want to go somewhere where there's room for him to grow a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, one more piece of news. Uh, the Phantoms have re-signed goaltender Pat Nagel for the upcoming season. He's and- earned it. He absolutely earned it. He came in and played really well. He is that solid AHL level goaltender that you want to have in your system. That's going to take a lot of starts and it's going to allow you to develop your prospect goaltenders the way you want to. He was an Olympic chaperone goalie. He was, he (laughs) was, he earned that spot on team USA given the circumstances. If you're going to have a guy like that, in the locker room for Team He's USA. A good guy. Really good guy. Um, really tremendously supportive in Lehigh Valley this past year. So I am very glad he is going to be there. I feel much better with him in net uh, for the guys in front of him to do yes. what they need to do. And I think that's the most important. Yeah, to help part. him develop. Like you said, a veteran goalie can really do that, especially with defensemen, with the communication and all that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right, so we are going to get to our crossover with Jared Ellis from Locked On Hurricanes coming up next. But first, we're going to hear about Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you're depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Delicious indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. 
All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you and your family. It'd be the perfect treat, or you could find a good hiding place and just hoard them for yourself. What's great about Built is all their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eating something that tastes good and is good for you. You're going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff. Whether you need a snack for your or workout or late night treat or just need to grab a quick bite. Built is perfect protein bar and they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, fat, and sugar. Grab yourself a Built bar. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 at Built.com. All right. So continuing our series of checking in with the other teams in the Metro division, today's contestant is the Carolina Hurricanes. And we are thrilled to welcome to the show, Jared Ellis from Locked On Hurricanes. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Good. Good. So I think there's still some pretty high expectations in Carolina for this upcoming season, but what were the goals uh, leading into this off season in terms of what you needed to accomplish? Yeah. So the goals for this off season, they were pretty simple. Uh, it was really adding some scoring. Uh, and we had done that with Max Pacioretty, but that is now, on the back burner for right now. Uh, that was really the big thing for this off season. And then adding uh, and replacing the guys that left. Uh, this was an off season very much like last off season where we had a lot of turnover. So the Hurricanes really had to go out and do their best to replace those guys that are no longer here. But other than Patch Reddy and his freak situation, the Hurricanes, they had a pretty good off offseason uh, th so far this off season, but we'll see if they have to make any more moves here soon, though. Jared, to follow up on, on Pacioretty, so it turns out that he's done this skating drill a thousand times, and it just happened. And, you know, my feeling is that is an issue where sometimes you get an older player and there's a lot of wear and tear. I think that was the risk, I think, when they went and got Pacioretty. Yeah, I agree. Uh, he's on the wrong side of 30 and he does have that injury history. And I think it was the Hurricanes. They they knew that risk going in, which is why they're able to stiff arm Vegas into the mm -hmm. trade that they did where they got him for basically nothing. I think it was like a conditional fourth or fifth rounder or something like that. So they knew the risk that they were taking and that's why they didn't put a whole lot into the trade. They didn't want to overpay for someone that is on the older side and does have that injury history. And we'll see what they do as far as replacement, because he had surgery uh, last Wednesday to repair that torn Achilles and expected time frame, I believe is six months. So that put it late January, early February, as far as him coming back. But like you said, he is on the older side, and that's just an estimate. It could be much later. It could be late February, early March. We just we don't know right now. It's still really early. Yeah, it's uh, it's really unfortunate because I think that was you know a real lucky thing for mm -hmm. the Canes to get a guy like that for nothing. But um, just really unfortunate for him and for the team. Uh, how do you think they'll replace what his productivity might have been? It's going to be very interesting. That was something I was talking about on an episode the other day of how they're going to do that. It's still something I'm honestly unsure of. Uh, I think the obvious answer is the guys that you have on your roster right now, they're going to have to step up some more uh, because, hey, you lost – you know, need a rider this off season, a guy that I think they should have made a bigger push to keep. You don't have him now. He has a really good depth scoring piece. So you're going to have to step up there. And it honestly wouldn't surprise me if they go out and try to make another trade, try to maybe pick up one of their few remaining free agents. There's not a whole lot out there. 
or maybe call on a guy from Chicago. Yeah, another guy coming up, Jack Dury. You know, he was pretty much a lock already to make the jump up to the NHL this season. Mm-hmm. So maybe we have another guy doing it. It's really just something. It's it's a little early to tell. I think we'll get a better idea of when it gets closer to training camp. Yeah, I could add on Jack. I mean, I've seen him play a lot. He He's a good player. He's a really good skater. He's smart. It is sort of like the difference of Chris Drury and Ted Drury, his dad. It is like that. Um, but it's possible he can contribute at some level. I don't know if he would do a ton of scoring, especially um, right now. He probably does need to still get stronger. But he, you know, he's smart enough he probably could get away with it. But let's play Remember When, uh, Jared, because now I want to go back to the um, Nikolai Wa, Eric Holla trade. And it seems like that trade has has not really worked out very well for Vegas, especially um, for um, Carolina. I mean, again, I didn't understand it because I always felt like they want, should have kept the size that he had and the fact that he could play center, whether he was going to or not. That trade never really made sense to me. Yeah, so it's a tough one uh, because Eric Holler, there's, there's some off ice stuff there that kind of led to him okay. uh, getting shipped out. So you mentioned briefly a bunch of guys left the team that you were looking to mm-hmm. replace. One of them is Tony D'Angelo, who the Flyers took. Um, first off, why do you think the Canes didn't re-sign him? And then what can we expect from him on the Flyers on the ice? So I think there's a few things that led to the Hurricanes not bringing D'Angelo back. I think first and foremost, came down to money. Uh, he was on a one-year, one million uh, prove-it deal here. So and he went out, and in terms of offense, he had a great season. Uh, so he was going to be looking for a, a really big raise, and the Hurricanes were not willing to give him that uh, because – I think they really saw the lapses in terms of defense in his game. Uh, you can look at playoffs. He very nearly cost us a series against Boston. He got lit up by his former team, the Rangers, in the second round. And there are things all throughout the regular season as well, just little mistakes and uh, even big mistakes as well. One I really go back to every – every time I talk about this, because it frustrated me so, so much at times. It was when the Hurricanes, they were on their road trip through Pennsylvania. Uh, I don't think they had played you guys yet, uh, but it was the game against the Penguins. He was over on one side of the rink doing God knows what, and he left Sidney freaking Crosby <laughs> wide open, and Crosby went right to the net and scored. Uh, and not saying D'Angelo would have stopped him because it is Sidney Crosby, but you left a player of that caliber wide open. That was extremely frustrating for me at the time, and it still is because it was something that – it was such a stupid mistake. And then, uh, you know, more recently you have the series against Boston of his defensive issues there, and then – his temper issues there. A lot of folks, you know, were really upset about how he just decided to throw his stick at Brad Marchand. Can't do that. Uh, but I, I think there was a lot of things just weighing in on that. I think his defense and money were probably the two big things. So let's talk about um, goaltending for a minute. We know Freddie Anderson's um, injury certainly set them back last year, but they had an interesting thing going because I'm a uh, a Pyotr Kachikov guy. I watched him in international play, so I'm in the K. Really do like him. They only gave him the three games. I, what if I told you I think he's better than Antti Ranta, and and I think that maybe Carolina should have shipped out Ranta, gone with Kachikov and and Freddie, and maybe gotten another player with that cap money. What would you say to me? It, I think that argument can be made. Uh, it, I don't agree with it. I think he still needs a little bit more time to just get used to the North American game. Uh, and that's why they kept Ronta. Freddie's the clear cut number one. And I think one thing that the Hurricanes need right now is some real depth in goal. So again, you know, maybe you know, could have shipped Ronta off because of his injury history, but you look at 
Freddie kind of being a little injury prone on the back uh, on the wrong side of 30. Same with Ranta. Uh, so having a young guy like that waiting in the wings, I think is, I think is really good. Uh, I mean, he could be the next and, Cam Ward. He, you might have yeah. Cam Ward in the ranks there and not know it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. It's, I definitely liked having him here. It was, I've kind of likened him to Alex Delkovic. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, for so long you figure, because once Cam Ward, he kind of hit his downslide of his career getting overplayed, playing hurt. And, you know, we all know how he was mishandled there towards the, his tail end in Raleigh. You had Ned there and the Hurricanes, a lot of money in developing him in Charlotte uh, and Florida Everblades when they're still the East AHL affiliate. Uh, they put a lot of work into him developing, and then he got his shot in the NHL. He's a Calder finalist. Yeah. He was really good, and they that didn't work out. Hey, they for just didn't want to pay reason. him. I mean, Detroit didn't pay yeah, him that much. Oh, my God. What was yeah. it, a million, <laughs> it, it was, was, uh, was it a million dollars more? Like, it's ridiculous. Not even that. Not even He's, that. Uh, it, it wasn't even that. Uh, I, I think he was asking for three – it was like 0.5 more than what the Hurricanes were asking, and then he settled for less in Detroit. But, you know, he was a guy that could very well have been the future. Uh, mm-hmm. And now, Piotr, you bring another really young guy in, uh, and I do think he could very well be that. In the time that we saw him in the NHL, he looked really, really good. Uh, obviously, a you know, picture everyone likes was when he was squaring up to Brad Marsh and or ready to fight him in one of the games. Yeah. That was great. Um, he didn't take any nonsense in the crease. You know? No. No. Uh, but, yeah, he's a guy – I think he just needs more time to get used to the American uh, – the North American game. I think that's it for him. I think hmm. – I mean, we never know what's going to happen this season. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think next season – or the following – not this coming season, but the next one. Uh, at that point, it would, Ranta and Anderson, both of their deals would be up because they both signed two-year deals. Uh, I think at that point, there could be a legit shot for Piotr to make the jump. I think he just needs more time to get used to the North American game. So one of the pickups that Carolina got this offseason was Brent Burns, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, what do you see his role being for the team this year? Yeah, so that was a trade that I initially was a little unsure on because of his age. He's mm-hmm. 37, 38 years old, and I just saw that. But then when I talk to JD from Lockdown and Sharks, he's telling me just how good this guy takes care of himself. And that, yes, he is on the older side, but akin to Tom Brady, he's old, but he takes really good care of himself. So that age isn't as big of a factor as it would be for uh, Joe Blow over there. So... Is he a long-term solution there on that first pairing with Jacob Slavin? No, he is 37 years old. But he is really going to be filling that spot that was left open when Dougie Hamilton left. Uh, Ethan Bear tried to, didn't fit there. Tony D'Angelo ended up sliding in there. And now it's going to be Brent Burns. So he's going to be the offensive defenseman to Jacob Slavin's defensive defenseman there on that first pairing. and. One thing JD told me was Brent Burns put like 52, 54 points on a god awful Sharks team last year. So yeah. now he's on a contender and he has a one of, if not the best defensive defenseman next to him. He can just do his thing. He doesn't have to pick up the slack from this guy and that guy. He can go out there and do what he does best. So I do think we very well could see a real good, big season from Brent Burns. Another Norris caliber season? Probably not. But I really think it's he's going to be fun to watch. Fans are really excited to see what he can bring. He's already in Raleigh uh, practicing alongside Jacob Slavin. I, I don't think it was the Hurricanes, but one of the folks that covered the scene, they posted a picture of them at the practice facility 
practicing together and getting a feel for each other. So I'm very excited to see what this season will bring for him. Yeah, they'll probably both eat at like Chipotle together because that seems like the only place hockey players go to. Um, yeah, and uh, actually, why. one thing that was really funny, uh, this past Friday, uh, SmackDown was at PNC Arena, and Brent Burns was there. He was yeah, talking to the fans, nice. and uh, one thing that's hilarious is, obviously, uh, we're in the South, folks wear a lot of camo. What was he doing? Wearing a lot of camo, just blending right in. So that was funny, uh, for sure, but folks are really excited to see what he can do this year, and I am as well. Yeah, so last year I picked uh, Carolina to win the Metro. They, you know, they earned it. Uh, I don't know if I could do that this year, Jared. Maybe you could talk me into it. So far, I'm hesitant. Yeah, so when it comes to the Metro, I think it's really going to come down between the Hurricanes and the Rangers. Uh, because those are clearly the top two teams. Uh, I've said it many times over the past, I think, couple of seasons now. We feel like we're in a real changing of the guard type era of the older teams like Pittsburgh, like Washington, and you know, outside of the Metro, like Boston, these teams that were on top for so long, they're getting older and they're phasing out. Uh, Washington especially. I think Pittsburgh, they could be in the mix, but I don't think they will. Uh, but – these younger teams, they're starting to take that uh, next step. And with the Hurricanes, they have since won back-to-back -back division titles. They won the Central Division in that realigned season. They just won the Metro Division for the first time, actually, having been in the division for so long. And they have momentum on their side. And they got sneaky good this offseason. I think Pacioretty – yeah. That's going to be an interesting thing to see how they replace that because I think having him there and adding that scoring, that was going to be really big because Sebastian Ajo, he's like a 40-goal scorer's fetch. He hit 30 for it the first time in his career, but you lost Niederreiter. You lost Trocek. Uh, Natchez is back. I'm looking for a big bounce-back season from him. Uh, Cotton Yemi. Uh, he's going to be getting a much bigger role this season with Trocek being gone, and he got that uh, nice long-term extension as well. The Hurricanes see a lot in him, and the second half of the season, he got really he got better. First half of the season was a little suspect, but he got there, and he's in a great spot to make up ground in terms of his development. The Hurricanes organization is great at developing young players, you look at guys across the league, not just on their team now. You know, we already mentioned Nedeljkovic. You got Justin Falk. You got Brock McGinn. And then, of course, you got guys that are still on the team, like Sebastian Ajo, Jacob Slavin, yeah, Andre Sveshkov. Really yeah, Seth Jarvis as well. Uh, he's another guy. Yeah, I'm looking for him to take yet another step. He was a guy that it was juniors or NHL. That was it for him last year because of his age. and. He went in a training camp and forced the Hurricanes hand of like, hey, I'm that good. I'm going to be on this team. And he was. And he's going to be having another year of experience and playoff experience under his belt. So I'm really excited to see what he can do. And like I said, it's going to come down to the Hurricanes and the uh, Rangers. The Hur Freddie Anderson is healthy. He's healed up from his tour, I believe it was MCL. And then Antti Ranta, he's going to be healthy. Piotr, he's getting used to the American uh, North American game. He just won a Calder Trophy with Chicago. Or not Calder Trophy, Calder Cup mm -hmm. with Chicago, excuse me. So he's on a roll. So he got that depth in goal should one of the other guys go down. The Hurricanes, they're continuing to gain experience year after year. These young group of guys, they can... They know what it takes to win now. I think that would that is why they're going to have the edge over New York because they have that experience of, hey, we know what it takes now. I like the Rangers back to that 2018-2019 Hurricanes team when they went to the conference final, lost to Boston. You know, they're a young team. They didn't they didn't know any better. Obviously, you had veteran guys on the team, of course. But they were a very young and inexperienced team. Now they have that experience, and that would be what 
carries them over New York is that experience. Right, you got me thinking about it. I'll say. Right. Well, I think it's certainly going to be an interesting battle at the top of the division. I absolutely think the Canes will be a part of that battle. Where it'll end up, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I, I'm not a betting person, but um, if I were, I would definitely put the Canes in the top two in, in the division for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Jared, this has been so great. Lots of excellent information on the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, where can people find you out there? Yeah, you can find the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Hurricanes. You can find myself on Twitter at Jared Ellis underscore 96. You can find the show on whatever streaming platform you're listening to this one on, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, whatever. You can find it there. And it's on YouTube at Locked on Hurricanes podcast. We just passed 100 subscribers the other day. Working really hard at growing that channel up. So come be a part of that, guys. Excellent. Thanks again, Jared. Thank you. All right. Once again, thanks to Jared from Locked on Hurricanes. That was a fun conversation. It was. And it's going to be a, a really interesting but enjoyable thing to watch I think from a distance <laughs> in terms of the Metro division and if the Canes really can pull off a another division title yeah I, I focus more on the Metro than anything else and uh, I'll be fascinated with it the Islander stuff is dragging on like there's there's a lot of intrigue in this division there really is. All right. Wrapping up with our Flyers fun thing. Of course, it's highlights from Sweden versus Team USA from World Juniors. You'll get to see those Emil Andre plays that we were talking about at the top of the show. So uh, take a look at that. Links in the show notes. That'll do it for today's show. We'll be back again tomorrow. We will be having a mailbag. So get those questions in via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at lockdownflyers at gmail.com. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. You made us your first listen today. Now make your next listen Locked On NHL. Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world with Locked On NHL, your daily NHL podcast.